take a, a selfie here, yeah, so. I'm gonna do one right now. We were the first to do this, I'm surprised. <laughs> so I am Paul Turnbull, I have been a part of IBM for 23 years. And the last eight of that has been as part of the Social Insights team, which is part of our Market Development and Insights group. And what we do is we use the social data from Sysimos Now Meltwater for uh, market research purposes. And I'm Kyle Schlopkel. I'm the worldwide social lead for IBM Blockchain. I oversee strategy and execution for the brand. There we go. Um, so I saw some hands go up about who knows about blockchain. And um, the question I had is who could um, describe blockchain in a single tweet? And if you could do that now, go ahead. But if not, wait towards the end because there's going to be a test afterwards and a chance to win some blockchain socks that Kyle and I both are wearing. <laughs> okay? So in our presentation, this is what we'll cover today. What is blockchain? and how IBM's blockchain WorldWire was launched, what it is, and what we did from a social insights perspective to help with its launch. And then we thought we'd end with just some learnings that maybe you could take back to the office. So maybe that's the time to get out the, the screen and do the screen grab for something that you can show your manager when you return. So what is blockchain? It is a shared immutable ledger that facilitates the process of recording transactions and tracking assets in a business network. Okay, I'm a visual learner, so we have a video about that. Don't worry about taking a picture of that one unless you really want it, but if we could run the video now. Since the days of clay tablets, people have recorded the exchange of goods and services. As we evolve into the digital age, recording these transactions has become much more complex. Whether it's the exchange of money between two parties, documenting how goods move through a supply chain, or making contractual agreements. The growth of global commerce and trade has created a network of disparate ledger systems, vulnerable to errors, fraud, and misinterpretation. Take the diamond industry, for example. The journey of a diamond from mine to consumer covers a complex landscape of legal, regulatory, financial, manufacturing, and commercial practices. Current supply chains have to rely on intermediaries every step of the way, from government officials to lawyers, accountants, dealers, and banks. This adds time and cost. Diamond smuggling and fraud can hamper governments from collecting fair export taxes, and consumers and retailers face the prospect of purchasing counterfeit or unethically mined stones. This is where Hyperledger blockchain technology comes in. It has the potential to eliminate these vulnerabilities with transparent transactions. Blockchain offers all parties involved in a business network a secure and synchronized record of transactions. The blockchain ledger records every sequence of transactions from beginning to end, whether it's hundreds of steps in a supply chain or a single online payment. As each transaction occurs, it's put into a block. Each block is connected to the one before and after it. Groups of transactions are blocked together and a fingerprint of each block is added to the next, thus creating an irreversible chain. That's why blockchain is ideal for recording the mining, refining, and distribution of one of the most valuable goods in the world. It can trace a diamond's path from the mine to the hands of the consumer with exceptional security and transparency. While blockchain works with all types of transactions, there are three key features that make Hyperledger blockchain uniquely capable to handle the requirements of a regulated industry like diamonds. It's distributed, it's permissioned, and it's secure. Because the ledger is distributed, it works as a shared form of record keeping, ensuring no one person or organization holds ownership of the system. As the diamond cycles through its supply chain, everyone involved during the process is permissioned to have a copy of every record and piece of data, and no transaction can be added to the chain without consensus across the participants. This means no one person can add to or alter the blockchain without it being permanently recorded, making it tamper-resistant and highly secure, eliminating the risk of fraud and error. No one, not even a system administrator, can delete it. In the case of diamonds, a blockchain ledger keeps a record of high-resolution photos of each diamond at every touchpoint along its journey. It holds certificates of authenticity, real-time records of every payment transaction, as well as product details like cut, clarity, color, carat, and diamond serial numbers. At the end of the buying cycle, there is a complete, auditable, and indisputable record of information. Blockchain technology gives us the ability to transform industries of all sorts, from diamonds to flowers, monetary transactions, or even things like contracts, deeds, records, and other public and private agreements. 
It frees up capital flows, speeds processes, lowers transaction costs, and most importantly, provides security and trust. We believe that blockchain will do for business what the internet did for communication, create new ways of working and leave more time for creativity and innovation. So aside from our core technology offering, the IBM blockchain platform, and our consulting arm, IBM Blockchain Services, IBM also has four solutions underneath the IBM Blockchain brand. Trade Lens is an open and neutral industry platform to secure the global supply chain. IBM Food Trust is an ecosystem to make a smarter, safer, and more sustainable food supply chain. Trusted Identity is a solution to secure identity management. And IBM Blockchain Worldwire is a solution built on the Stellar Protocol for cross-border payments. Today, we're gonna to focus on IBM Blockchain Worldwire. Let's let Jesse Lund, Global VP of Digital Currencies and IBM Blockchain, tell you more. In the last 20 years, the internet has shown that cultures have come closer together just by way of the efficiency of communication. So that's why cross-border payments is the key because people from all around the world are now connected as buyers and sellers, as producers and consumers, and yet the payment systems of the world haven't caught up yet. The system today that supports the majority of international transactions is really based on a network infrastructure that hasn't really changed in more than 50 years. But the reality is that it doesn't move at the pace that the new global consumer experience requires. The problems with cross-border payments today and with settling transactions on an international basis today is that they're slow because of the friction that is introduced by way of all of the different intermediaries that impacts the end user experience who at the end of the day just wants their money and they just want to know when it's coming so that they can plan accordingly. And the same thing goes for businesses too. In fact, it's even more pronounced for businesses who are trying to manage cash flow there is a tipping point coming, and blockchain, in particular digital currencies, this notion of being able to have a monetary store of value that can move as easily as email, as information can move, is really kind of the next thing. Blockchain changes the dynamic in that you eliminate the need to have intermediaries. You're just dealing with the two end party actors. It's more point to point, so it reduces friction. If you have less stops along the way, you have less cost, less time. Ultimately, that translates into a better overall experience for the sender and for the recipient. Well, IBM Worldwire will be a new type of transactional payment network that enables money to move more seamlessly, more quickly, more cost effectively to anywhere in the world. It is a network at its very core, provides a means for counterparties, that is to say for financial institutions acting on behalf of their beneficiaries to signal to one another that they want to send money for some reason and to be able to do all of the due diligence that's required to make sure that the money being sent is not being sent from any nefarious actor and likewise the recipient is a legitimate uh, entity. The novelty of WorldWire is that payment message instructions and the store of value, the actual money, move together as a sequence set of operations in a single transaction on a single network. That's pretty profound because it's no longer about just making accounting entries, it's also about moving real monetary value in conjunction with those accounting entries. That's never happened before, that's something entirely new. Ultimately, we hope to see a global financial network that represents a real-time facility for moving money from anywhere to anywhere, where a foreign exchange is just an inherent part of the process that happens automatically. The thing that is most exciting in this space, having been a banker for 18 years, just like the internet was a paradigm shift in connecting people and communications, this is an equally transformational paradigm shift. To be a part of that I and mean, changing the world is very cool.
Right, so Kyle had turned to my team when this, before this product had launched and said, could you do some listing around the payment space? So we did, and I have some results from that. First, during the study period last year, we noticed that the conversations were increasing, which was very interesting. It's a good market to be in that has increased conversation. And most notably, the last three months of it had an increase in blogs specifically. So we delve a little bit deeper into this. What we found is that there were a couple conversation spikes that led to a trend. Um, first, they were all driven by announcements, namely IBM and the Stellar announcement, Cambridge Global Partners with Ripple, who is a competitor of ours here, and Banco Mavitas and their announcement with uh, Bitcoin that they were using it for a lot of their cross-border um, transactions. And they were moving to that platform. What we also looked at was just the top hashtags. Understanding the marketplace you're going into so you can speak in terms of that customer and their hashtags is really key. But we found something else interesting. Namely, four of the top 10 hashtags were from Ripple, the competitor. So Ripple, XRP, um, and XRP the standard, and XRapid. So they're all over this space. We also looked at the top retweets. So six of the top retweets were from Ripple. They're very much into this conversation. Two were from Brad Garlinghouse. Does anyone know who Brad is? He's the CEO for Ripple. <laughs> so all eight of the top retweets were from the same company. So what did we really learn from this? For one, we had a good understanding of the competitive messaging. What's key in this area is the crypto partnership, right? Who's, me who's me um, joining with who and making those major announcements in this new space? And we also saw the importance and power of an influencer, namely Brad Garlinghouse. So let me turn it back to Kyle to see how the launch went. So using the information from the pre-launch analysis, we did something very un-IBM-like. We deleted all of our tweets, we changed our banner image, and we posted a single cryptic tweet, letting people know about a couple upcoming speaking engagements for Jesse Lund, our influencer, had coming up. We've been introducing Jesse to the crypto community for the past eight months. And during this time, he was also teasing an announcement in conjunction with the Stellar Foundation. People were very excited about all of this. We, we actually took the time to go radio silent across all of our channels as well. So they started, except to like tweets where people were talking about what this could mean for Stellar and IBM blockchain. We got a tremendous amount of engagement where people were even speculating that this could mean that our account was hacked. During this time, due to the high amount of engagement, we actually got 10,000 organic views of our Twitter asset. We maintained this radio silence until we finally broke the announcement with a single tweet, letting people know that IBM Blockchain Worldwire was live. During this time, we also had Jesse Lund amplify the tweet, and throughout the day, we released video assets in conjunction with the Stellar Foundation. The community, went, the community went crazy. Within 24 hours, we had over 10,000 mentions. We had over 40,000 video views on Twitter. We had the fourth and fifth most retweeted posts with a combined 600 retweets. We had 1,000 upvotes on our Reddit brand account and over 7,500 YouTube views. We also had dozens of YouTube influencers talking about IBM Blockchain and Stellar. It's important to note, to put these stats into context, that we are not a consumer-facing company. We're a B2B company. And while during 2018, IBM Blockchain had 26% of all of IBM's social responses, this was one of the first times that IBM truly felt like we were a little closer to the mainstream. Now, I'm gonna turn it back to Paul, who's got some quick social insights that we use every single day in our social strategy. Thank you, Kyle. So just wanted to wrap up on this. A couple things that we try to keep in mind, both in our analyses and as we work with our marketing teams. One, it's important, especially in the pre-launch phase, to understand what the customers are speaking about in that marketplace. You know, we're launching new products that may be you know, new to the industry. So we really need to understand what, what they're speaking about when they talk about it before our launch. Um, IBM does a lot of marketing to different audiences. You know, we have a developer group, we have C-suite, and we really try to craft different messages for them. Finally, as Kyle had mentioned with this launch of uh, Worldwire, 
you know, it's important to focus on getting that earned media rather than um, owned media. You can push a lot of content, but it's really that engagement, trying to get people to follow you. I mean, that's some basic, but it's always one of those key things and key focuses to keep in mind. So hopefully, you know, these are some things you can consider as you go back to the office. And we go back to what we started with here. After this, who could send out a tweet? We could go to the live Twitter feed. We're gonna see if anyone could do it and get the socks. Three more. Do we have any yet? Now the Pepsi story, yeah, come on, on come on. By, we'll give it to you. <laughs> yes, oh, we must have missed it on the Twitter feed. So right up front here. Oh, you want them? <laughs> Sorry, two more pairs left. Oh, okay. Did you use the hashtag? Did you use the hashtag right here. There you go. Thank you. One more pair? Yes, over well, here she got hers. That's hers. Let me see right if there. I can get it yes. back to you. Oh, All right. I'm sorry. Well, th thank you. And um, I think we're wrapping up here.